As you can see, this is not a race car. This is my wife's 2017 Traverse. And we have a bad right rear wheel bearing that we gotta take care of. But let's start with the story. I lifted this thing up on the lift and then realized I didn't have my impact on with me. That it was in the trailer at my in-law's house with a race car on it. So I hopped in my little blue truck, which I don't know if you guys have seen that or not, 95 OBS. We're gonna do a lot of work to that truck, but either way, it's just a 4.3. But it's a short bed, regular cab, you know, it's got the nice SS wheels on it. Unfortunately, it's just a 4.3. So we do have a V8 for it over there on the engine stand, but that's not the story, okay? I hopped in it to run up to grab the impact gun. I pull in next to my truck and trailer, you know, throw it neutral, push the e-brake, hop out, go over to the truck, grab my impact gun. And as I'm standing next to my avalanche with the impact gun, I'm like, man, I smell antifreeze. Why do I smell antifreeze? It's really weird. So I grab my impact, hop back in the little blue truck, take back off down the road. It's just right, right up the road here. I'm getting back to my house and I'm like, I smell antifreeze. Where is that coming from? What is going on? So I pull in my parking spot, pop the hood, hop out, open the hood of the truck and just steam. Water pump took a shit. Just spraying water, coolant, not really water, coolant everywhere. So that's cool. That's how we wanted to start the day. Guess I'll be driving the avalanche to work this week. Now, and it's August. I can keep driving Little Blue for a couple months before we start the V8 swap. So do I just order a water pump and fix it and keep driving it for a little while? Or do we just say, screw it and park it until it's time for the V8? It's a tough call. I don't know. But let's do this wheel bearing. Because this has to be fixed. Because the wife and kids drive it. Yeah, I'm being a rebel. Chrome socket. For some reason, the socket that's missing out of my impact set is a 22. I, I don't know. ago I did a brake job on this car so as you can see brand new brand new rotor brand new caliper because this caliper was hanging out but now the wheel bearing is bad so this shouldn't be terrible this stuff should come off wheel bearing I live in New York this could wind up being a nightmare but Let's hope we got the bad luck out of the way already this morning. So anyways, lug nuts, 22 millimeter. Uh, I think that caliber bracket is 18, but I'm not 100% sure. 18, 19, I don't know. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? 19, 22, that's three quarters. Grab an 18 and a 19, because why not? It's not easy to get to either. It is not 18. Guess what? It's not 19 either. Neither one of those. Caliper, the caliper bracket, the whole thing's got to come off. It's 21. So, like I said, it was just off, and I probably put never seize on it, so this shouldn't be that bad. Man, it's 
it's nice when you just hit it apart. You don't gotta fight it. I don't think the wheel bearing is gonna be the same for us here. I guess you never know. You got zip tie for that. Gotta have a liquid death, you know. My tea, I have my tea, I don't have it. I need like one of those roll around carts to you know, set my tools and shit out while I'm working. That would make life easier. For real. Right. I'm just gonna set that up on the spring perch. Yeah, zip tie, caliper, sway bar, out of the way. Easy peasy. I gotta take this stupid little Torx out. Like I said, I just had it off, so it's probably, should be laying right in my bill box. And I'm so good at putting stuff away. See, told you. That's not the right size right <laughs> Oh, maybe that was the right size ratchet. Oops, I was wrong. It was. It's the, it's the right size ratchet. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know, it seems like nothing's tight. It is. It, it was. I just gave it a little wacky whack, you know. Pop it free. And where's it going? It's not going anywhere. What are the chances this rotor comes off without a fight? That's pretty good, because I just worked on it. Alright, you may have noticed a little blip in the video there. My phone decided, I'm just not going to record anymore. Right after we took the rotor off. And I kept talking, and I was trying to find the uh, socket for the axle here. Which I didn't have. It is a 34 millimeter. I had to run down to Don's who also lives right down the street. It's my uncle, uh, the number eight Cobalt Crew car. Uh, my coolant spewing blue truck made it there and back. Not without leaving a giant puddle of coolant in the road right in front of his house though, so. Oh, that's fun. Anyways, let's get the saxon lot out there. Yourself? I sprayed penetrating oil on there first. But, you know, good note. For New York, it's not that rusty. I probably shouldn't have said that out loud, but I did. Where's my hammer? I need a drink. It's running around. It's running around, making me thirsty. All right, we gotta pop this axle free. Ugh, it's stuck. Hammer, hammer, where are you, hammer? What do you think? Can we do this without fucking the threads up? Probably not. Put this nut back on. Little thread protector here. There we go. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Freed up. There we go. That's free. Now. There's bolts on the back of this. If I can see them, they. Uh, what is this? Is it 20? Nope, it's not that. No, nope, it's smaller. Smaller than a 20. So that's definitely not a 21. 
Let me get those sockets I put back in the drawer. If I was a betting man, I'd say it was an 18. Could probably find my 18 six point though. But I don't see any way out. There it is. I brought the 19 though, just in case, but it's probably an 18. It is an 18. Now, the other videos on YouTube that I watched, these guys used a long extension with a wobble to get these out. Most likely they have red Loctite on them from the factory. I'm gonna be a little bit tight. I think there's three. Yeah, that's, that's my Loctite for sure. It's gonna take me a while to get out. Point me the whole way. So I got to that bottom one from the top, as you can see. And when I go this way with the ratchet, I'm actually collapsing the boot on the axle. And that's the only stroke that we have in the ratchet. So if you don't have a wobble extension, you know, a half inch one, which is what I would need, you can do it with a half inch ratchet. You just don't have a ton of strokes, that's all. <laughs> We'll get there someday, I promise. Oh, I need to put some bulb in that light. Only well, got one left. I can't barely get my fingers in there. We got it. Tips of the finger one there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Three bolts. Now the fun part. Now the fun part. Getting it off. I got this old slide hammer. I don't even know where this thing came from, and I don't even know if it's gonna work. But I brought it over here because we got it. So let's see if we can catch a couple of bolts here. Not quite. Hmm. Can we catch two bolts at the same time? On the top, we can. That axle's kind of in the way. Let's try it anyway. Let's see what we can do with this slide hammer. Might work, might not work. 
Probably not. I can't get it on far enough. That's not gonna work. So, I wonder if I can just hook it behind it. Slide it in behind it. That actually kind of looks like maybe it moved. They can't get into the bottom side. Huh. How do we want to do this now? They make a special tool that bolts on here. It's like a big bar that sticks out and you hit it with a hammer. I don't have one of those. Now, let me show you the new wheel bearing, because I got it sitting here. So. The new wheel bearing has new wheel studs, okay? We don't really have to worry about those wheel studs, so we can destroy those if we want to. We don't want to destroy the lug. The studs don't matter, because nobody can tell. Pretty good? What happened? Trying to knock this thing pretty good. Oh, wow. At all. Now, I'm not going to get that. What's that? Ready? 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 
I don't think you want to watch me do this, so I want to put it in time. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I was able to force that thing on there. Like I said, we didn't have to worry about the wheel lug studs. So um, a lot of times these hub puller things, sometimes you can rent something like this from the auto parts store. Um, I can't promise that you're gonna be able to do that, but I had this one. Um, I could have keep beating the crap out of it with an extension on the backside and probably gotten there, this, gotten the same result, but that time lapse was probably, whew, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of me beating the shit out of that thing. You saw me go grab gloves because it was hurting my hands. And then I broke the slide hammer and had to weld it. So good times. So I'd say it was probably 20 minutes. But yeah, so basically, if you look inside there, see all that corrosion inside that spindle. That is why that didn't want to come out of there. So um, <clears throat> we'll... Uh, Take a little wire wheel or something, we'll clean that up good so that the new wheel bearing sits right in there. But we got it off. As you can see, all this stuff stays on the back plate. Your brake line and everything. <laughs> all stays there. Uh, there's a little wheel speed sensor thing here. Got to watch out for that. Don't break that thing. You can see it here. See that little stud thing sticking down? That reads the ring. Uh, does it read the... I don't know if it reads the wheel bearing or if it actually reads the axle, but it might read the wheel bearing. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Electrical is not my, not my strong suit, but clean this up. We'll get this new bearing in here. Just a little note here. Uh, if you do use the lug nuts like I just did with that slide hammer, uh, it does beat the lug nuts up a little bit. So you don't want to take a file, clean those bad boys up before you put them back on. Just some food for thought. If you do what I just did. You want to clean these up before they uh before you put them back on because they actually lock they tighten up on the taper here so you gotta clean those burrs off so that uh your lug nuts don't come loose while you're driving don't forget the important stuff man all right we jumped ahead just a little bit um i showed you the corrosion in there i took my little die grinder air power die grinder and i cleaned all that corrosion out of there uh the new wheel bearing i took a little never cease and ran it around the bore uh, you can never seize the aluminum spindle or the bore or whatever, you know. To try to prevent that from happening, if I ever have to do this again, being all corroded in there, a little bit of never seize, slap it back together. Now, I mentioned before that I bought the MevoTech spindle with the hardware. Now, for the Chevy Traverse, uh, probably GMC Acadia, whatever the other models are, uh, when you go on Rock Auto to order the wheel bearing, it says fits front or rear because this is an all-wheel drive. Um... Unfortunately, the hardware is not the same. <laughs> the front spindle must be a little bit skinnier than this back spindle because the hardware was too short. It would not reach the bearing. So I had to use the old hardware in the back. Luckily, we didn't damage it when we were playing with the air hammer and stuff. So I have that. This is all tightened back up. The axle nut is not tightened back up. Now, the axle nut. Um, they say 150 foot-pounds. Uh... I'm just going to give it the Ugga Duggas. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not going to give it 150 foot-pounds. We're just going to run it in tight. Tight. This is a medium torque, okay? Now, this isn't the high torque one. So, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what the spec is on that. But uh, today, it's 150. <laughs> All right. Here we go. That's back together. Put this bad boy back on here. Uh, this one only has one bolt hole for the torques. Put that light back up. Um, or maybe not. I missed. Wrong hole. <laughs> That's what she said. Wrong hole today. Anyways, there you go. Line that back up. Put that little torques back in there. Uh, you don't really have to put this little torques bolt back in here kind of helps line the rotor up but yeah i think it's probably more of a factory to make it 
ease of assembly kind of thing. Um, here in the north, these can get rusty, these little Torx heads here, and get stuck, and then they strip, and then you gotta drill them out, and it's an absolute pain in the ass. So if you're in the rust belt, you do not have to put this back in here. Um, I am, because I've had it out a couple times now, and I never seized it all up, so I'm not that worried about it. And because of the way that I took the uh, caliper bracket off, this not wobbling around will be uh, handy when I just go to put this back on here. Gotta cut my zip tie. Time lapse of watching me beat that bearing out of there gives it kind of a false sense of ease. Makes it look easier than it really is. That's, it, it can be a royal pain in the ass. I mean, give yourself a few hours if you're gonna try to do this job because it can be an absolute nightmare if you live in the rust belt like I do. My brake pads popped out here. Ah. Fighting this for a second. Being lazy, not taking the caliper off the bracket might cost me a minute here. Probably should have disassembled the whole thing. There we go. We got it. Let's see if I can make this work. Ghost to open my door. Ugh. What was that? Is that 22? I think it was. I think that was 22. Brackets. No. Was it? It wasn't 22, was it? 21. That's what it was. Is that this one? That's this one. That's it. Put the wheel back on. We are done. We just did a wheel bearing on the 2017 Chevy Traverse, all wheel drive. Not too bad. Um, short of having a 34 millimeter socket for your axle nut and a good way to hammer that thing out of there, you can do this at home. Um, like I said, I think you can, the slide hammers, I think some auto parts stores will rent those out. If not, you can probably get one on eBay or Amazon. They, they're, I can't imagine they're super expensive. Oh, or you just hammer it. I mean, you beat it. Like I put the bolts in the back and I had the extension. I'm beating the shit out of it. Um, short of this one sensor up here, you could heat up the spindle with a torch or something. And that would help probably break your free and get it out of there. Uh, that's going to be your main trouble when doing this is going to be freeing the wheel bearing from the housing itself. Uh, as you can see the bolts, I mean, I'm in New York, it's 2017, it's been here its whole life. Uh, we got the bolts out without too much of a fight. It really came down to just separating the bearing from the spindle. Um, yeah, not that big a deal. Uh, quick episode of Build a Kingdom. Uh, in the next episode, I have a feeling we're going to be doing a water pump in a 1995 Chevy 1500. 4.3 liter. Uh, it's probably the same water pump as the small block because it's the 4.3 is just a small block with two cylinders cut off. So, got to go one side now, go on Rock Auto and order me a water pump because that's going to be the next project we have to do. It's not, it's not how I planned my week. There we go. <laughs> Keep it creative and happy building.